Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the NAS presentation. I'm really happy that you are so many of you. It was not easy to find a space. Uh, this talk is about state of NATS, uh, about the core, persistence, materialized views. Mm. I will walk through some basics of NATS with you and also uh, update you on, uh, on the new things. Uh, my name is Tomasz and I am an engineer at Synedia. Uh, Synedia is company behind uh, NATS. Uh, I'm maintainer of the Rust client mainly and also contributing to the other repositories. Mm, and Snedia's company is, uh, is, as I said, behind NATS and is having a NATS as a service and most of the contributors actually uh, at, at the company. Okay, so what will be the agenda? First of all, as I said, I want to do some introduction to NATS for those of you who are maybe heard of it or not yet and want to not be out of the context when I'll get on the features. Uh, then we'll get through the new features and we'll do some hopefully successful demo of cho chosen features which are key value storage and object store. So before I start, how, how many of you heard about NATS? <laughs> that's, in, that's impressive. How many of you use NATS in production? <laughs> Those are really impressive numbers. And actually, uh, this is something I wanted to, uh, to talk about for a moment, which was not part of my agenda, but I think it's really in interesting and imp impressive for me that when we are right here, uh, the amount of people uh, that reached us, that we, uh, the, the companies that we met that are using NATS on the pavilions, like half of them were at the some stage of uh, doing POCs or knowing about it or having it in production, that, uh, that part of NATS that it just was downward from the community actually, uh, the adoption that came is something that's just, uh, I was shocked and as positively as I can be. And uh, that's what makes us really happy and really impressed. Those hands reasons tell us a lot. But okay, so I feel now it's a little pointless to talk about what it NATS if most of you use it in production. So uh, let's go through it anyway. <clears throat> So basically it's performance, simplicity, security, and availability. It's the sim very simple thing that is uh, at, at the same time very performant and very easy to secure to the point you could call it like uh, zero trust and properly secured. Uh, in addition, for last one year, especially more than one year, uh, when Jetstream arrived, uh, I think that it uh, improved a lot in terms of the feature uh, coverage because it, it's not only pops up, uh, it, it was, it had uh, not streaming, but it was not as simple uh, as without it. And with JetStream built in the SNAT server, which is this 15 megabytes binary, we get back the simplicity with all the features that we can, we needed for the persistence. Um, and it runs anywhere because it's, almost anywhere because it's written in Go. So whenever you can compile uh, uh, Go, it will run there. And it's very small, like, as I said, 15 megabytes. And again, getting back to the community part is, as you can see, the, the numbers are just numbers, but they're growing increasing, increasingly fast. The, when I last updated this part of, of, of slides, because this part I reuse, uh, I had to bump the Slack members numbers by 1,000. And I was like, whoa, that's, that's, that's really a lot. And we see it, right, on Slack, that it's incredibly active community that uh, sometimes us as uh, Synedia employees and contributors, we just, I'm doing something, I see a question, and before I manage to answer it, it's somebody else from community answered it. And it's really incredible and uh, just something I wanted to share. And thank you all, because you all, a lot of you are contributing to those answers and help. And it's just, the adoption is because of that from the open source community is just growing and pleasant with, for anybody I talk to how they are feeling with NATS. So thank you all for that. So who is using NATS? You, you basically, <laughs> as you saw, I saw all the hands up. Uh, but there are lots, lots of actual companies, uh, very big ones, 
like MasterCard, like I will not name them all because we could spend some, quite some time. So it's not only open source uh, adoption, it's also the actual production grade on huge scale. Uh, sometimes the clusters are super clusters spun across the globe. It's, 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 it's really something impressive and it's growing. Okay, but yeah, the overview, I will get it a little shorter <laughs> if, if you, <laughs> most of you use that. Uh, but to get it, uh, the baseline for everybody, also those online, the things are, uh, it's location independent, so if you know the address where the NAS cluster or server is, you, 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 you're fine, uh, then you just need subjects to communicate, to, to publish, to, re, uh, to communicate with other services. Uh, at core, it's PubSub, so at, at, uh, at the most ones, fire and forget. Mm -hmm. Core also has request reply patterns, so you can have some kind of synch synchronous communication when the, you, you're not that independent then because the replier has to be available to, to, to return you the message. But it's possible in, in Core NAS without just streams. But then streams come in, of course, which are based, uh, were based on NAS streaming before, now they're on JetStream. And JetStream is the new persistence layer which is built in uh, NAS server, so it's not uh, a separate sidecar or anything like that. So we are, right now, we have already three patterns for communication, three de delivery guarantees. It's at most once, if you're using core nuts, and at least once with standard jet stream, and exactly once if you uh, do a little more uh, stuff with jet stream. It's very simple, but a little less efficient. Uh, security is a very important thing. Uh, the, the ability to make it secure from almost the, the one uh, is, is, is not, is not a, something that you play with nuts and after some time you realize, oh, now security, so we start almost over, <laughs> over again with a lot of things. In nuts, uh, you have so many ways, a centralized, decentralized way of securing uh, things that it really makes it possible that the POCs are uh, TLS enabled and uh, secured from, from the not day one, but from very early. Uh, decentralization is a big thing, and I will s not talk about it now because I have a few slides about it later. The same for global scale, which nuts with all the topologies allows. And yeah, all in that in 15 megabytes binary, which make it possible to uh, be used in really many scenarios, uh, like IoT, like ed small edge devices, or whatever can run actually nuts because it's so lightweight. So yeah, here are some of the deployments uh, models. It's mostly anywhere when uh, we run it on Raspberry Pi, on VMs, on bare metal, Docker, Kubernetes. Uh, so what are the, as I mentioned, the dark architecture is different you can, you can pick. Uh, the simplest one is just one NAS server. That's probably where most of our users start, just run the server and have it done. Uh, though the fact that it's 15 megabytes makes it really nice for, even for testing, when you can test, it's so lightweight that you can test it against the actual, class, actual server that you spin uh, in your tests and, and run it against, and you can run thousands of them on your machine and run the test against actual NAT server, not some mocks. Um, what usually uh, people end up is NAT cluster, uh, NAT cluster for consistency, sorry, for high availability and uh, horizontal scalability. The next step is superclusters, which are clusters connected through the gateways. And what the gateways does is they mm, limit the chattiness. So even you have clusters uh, spun up across one cluster here, one cluster in different region, different cloud provider. You don't want them to be as chatty as typical clusters of whatever software you'd like to. So what gateway does, they just limit it to the minimum that is needed to, to, to communicate, which make it really nice for, for big deployments, which are not blown out by the, all the communication that's happening. And the last one, and for sure not least, is the super clusters with leaf nodes. Uh, it could be cluster or super cluster with leaf nodes. And the leaf nodes are a feature that, that there are not servers running, uh, that can be running also as clusters and that can, don't have to have uh, one of the use cases, a constant link with, for example, the cluster. So they're great for IoT applications. So you can have a, a leaf node sitting on the edge device in the factory and have the cluster in the cloud that, for example, aggregates all the data. And then 
uh, if the network is down, which is pretty often for IoT factory floors, which are remote locations, etc., the state when the link is up will synchronize whenever it's available, and the, then the leaf node is able to function and serve uh, all the services, uh, all the features as the connection is, is down. And I think this is some really great thing in that. Mm. So let's get to the new features. Uh, some things are around security, so encryption and rest and OSTP uh, support so, so we can revoke uh, the public keys. Next one is uh, monitoring and management. We put some, some efforts in quite a lot of efforts in it, not only for MQTT and WebSockets, that's also important, uh, but some things like small things, but uh, valuable, like being able to, uh, that errors are being locked, the errors from health, this is especially useful in Kubernetes setups where it, that didn't give you much if you saw this, this error and you didn't have the lock, what's happening. Mm. And having more things uh, feed into the health, it's also, it also helps. Mm. Very interesting thing, uh, I, we could talk for a longer time, but for now just a sneak peek what it is. Uh, some way of partitioning, uh, though not the scary one, it's pretty uh, simple actually, and what it does, it deterministically hashes one of the, uh, one of the tokens in the subject, token being the new orders or customer ID, and hashes this and gives you another uh, token at the end of your, for example, at the end, because you can form it as, as you like, uh, and, and this enables you deterministic hashing that allows you to split the, really nicely the, the traffic. Mm, and you don't lose any typical jet stream and NAS features with it. So this is basically built up on the, uh, the, the, the subject mapping feature of NAS. We've added some small, maybe not magic mechanism from our side that allows uh, do, do, doing the hashing. As this is a KubeCon, it would be really not good not mention <laughs> that a lot of work was put into the uh, uh, Helm charts, uh, the officially supported Helm charts. And right now I think that most of the things can be configured via the Helm charts. So you can set up uh, authentication, uh, all the accounts if you want to, mm, how the cluster is formed, what are the mm, uh, storage settings, etc. And we're getting some good uh, response that, it, that, that it, 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 did, it did improve. And I think it's, that's important. Uh, so we get much closer to Kubernetes to being easily run on Kubernetes because we think it's really important so that as cloud native technology, it should run really well on Kubernetes. Uh, and from Jetstream, a lot of uh, small and big things. Mm, you can now mm, limit, uh, set limits, for example, on accounts uh, of different kinds. Uh, the pool consumers were, a um, lot of work was put into pool consumers. Uh, the ephemeral pool consumers were added, so the consumers that are only there for Jetstream when, when you subscribe to them. Uh, so the pool consumers become more, way more performant. Mm, and it also inactive thresholds, so you can set for how long your, uh, your ephemeral consumer will live after you're, you're done with it. So you don't have to pick if it's durable, so it stays forever until deleted or it will die whenever you unsubscribe. Now you have something in between, which is, I think, very important. Mm, backups. So when you're sending NAC, so you, you want to say, I will not acknowledge this message, please send me it again soon. Now you can define when the uh, message will be sent again. And also you can specify the, the back of array of times and you say, okay, so whenever acknowledge fails, so the next one will be sent in then, then, then. So basically you can have a proper back of however back of you would like to have in resending those uh, those uh, requests for acknowledgement and, and resending the messages. A mm. lot of work also was put into, I'll gather those, into the fact that you can now tag, for example, um, a stream, and so a stream will be put on specific location or a cluster with specific tag. Uh, you can also uh, have alternates of streams, so you can pick from the closest stream for you, for example, and uh, get messages from it. So it allows us to reduce the latency if, for example, the, the publishers put the just the, the consumer was pretty, the stream was far away, but now we have options to improve the latency a lot if you like to. Mm. Sealed streams is 
uh, something that you can set the stream to be sealed, which means it cannot be, it, you can read it, but it's only basically read only, you cannot put more messages into it. And two uh, more import, most important features, I believe, is key value storage and object storage. Uh, key value and object store, uh, which I will demo in a moment. Yeah, actually I will demo them now. <laughs> Hopefully. So uh, for this time, for a change, uh, I'll be using Rust client. I think, how, how many of you did, are using Rust? Yeah, that's yeah, more than I expected actually, because <laughs> you know, being the most loved language, always picked on the Stack Overflow as most loved language, also I think the least known <laughs> at the same time. Uh, but I think that it's for the demo, for you, for those who are whatever other language uh, uh, Guys, it still it should be okay because the API is for this at least is is pretty simple. So we will start with uh, connecting to NAS itself. So for this question mark, just to let you know, is it it does the uh, how many of you are Go developers? Oh, so this is you don't have to write if error is not nil then return. This is by the <laughs> <laughs> this is for you. Uh, this this is this is this is what it does. Uh, now we'll create a jet stream. It's not a connection. It's just a context, so we can set domain and different things there. So we use NAS jet stream new and pass the NAS connection. It does not have an error. And now we'll create, I'll start with key value. Uh, okay, and it's not key value config. Ooh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so any of you already used key value or object store? Something new to show finally. <laughs> you don't know. So there are a few things you can set in key value. Uh, bucket, which is just a name. And just for you to know, key value and object store is all it does, it just built on Jetstream. So underneath, for those of you who are proficient with, with Jetstream, when you pick into the streams that were created while using key value and object store, you will just see streams and all the consumers underneath that are handling all the, all the stuff. Uh, we just had to improve uh, Jetstream a little to make it efficient. So let's create a bucket. Let's call it, I don't know, pets or things. Doesn't matter really. Uh, description is nothing important. Uh, the max size, you can specify the maximum size of single key value pair. Uh, you can specify um, history. So how many values will be kept for given key? All the older one will be discarded. Max age, uh, basically this is TTL. Uh, you can set that after one second or one minute, uh, the keys that the TTL has re been reached, they will just be deleted. We'll not <coughs> jeopardize our demo with this. Uh, max bytes, max number of, um, of the stream itself for the given key value. Storage is file or memory. And replicas is just number of replicas of the stream. And what's interesting is, um, I got a question recently if this, uh, how, how the state is being handled, but actually if you set three replicas, it behaves exactly as a typical jet stream. So what, it doesn't matter, you will just get the, when you set, when you inserted the new value, it's there for all the replicas when you, when you get the acknowledgement for that. So that's really fun. Okay, now let's a little rust magic. Okay, so this is just, this feels all the data, except Rust does not, yeah. Let's not talk about strings in Rust, okay? Let's just skip this. It, it, it makes this, this slice a string. It's a really good read to read about how Rust handles strings because every language has to do it and it's not easy. Here it's just more exposed to the user for, for some reasons. Uh, but we'll not get into that now. So uh, right now, uh, let's see if it works. Uh, let's run this. 
Okay, we didn't fail at this step. And now what we can do is we can actually, um, what we'll do, what, how we, we called it? Things. Okay, so you can watch over the uh, key values. So that's what I'm doing exactly now in the background. This is not CLI, so not CLI supports both key value and object store. I really recommend key value, uh, sorry, CLI for, for playing with nuts. Okay, so first thing first, let's do the most obvious thing. We want to put things, uh, let's go, let's go. I, sorry, I'm not very creative right now. Let's value. Uh, okay, let's run it. And what you see here on the, on the right, that the watcher printed the change that happened in the key value. Underneath this is just, again, jet stream. Uh, what do we can do else with it? We can, re we can, for example, this returns revision, I guess. So let's, if we want it for later use. Mm, so what else we can do is uh, we can get the value. And we just pass the name of the key. We don't have to pass the name of the bucket because we're operating on the, uh, in the context of this bucket. So this question marks handles error, but what I would actually do, I will match against, this is pattern matching in Rust, because the, there are two options what can happen. There are no nils in Rust, so either we'll get a key or there is no key, no, no value for a given key. So if it, there is a key, let's say, value and then we're printing it. Oh, I have to, because it there are bytes go this way or it's nothing. This is for those who use any language that have optionals, that's, bas that's basically it. One of the reasons I didn't want to do it in Go because when I tried the demo in Go, I had new pointer. So I thought that it would be good to not have them. Okay, so we have that here. And if we will run it, we should see, yeah, we, as, as you see, we see the value. The, the, the okay is nothing relevant for now because it's another wrap error, doesn't matter. Okay, so we, just very easily put a value, get a value, and actually being able to watch it. Uh, the watch thing, I will not show it now because it's just an API that enables you to do the same in the application. So, so let's skip it. What we can do also is update. So as you see in line 14, I, I have a revision I didn't use because I want to show you now this, which allows us to say, for example, thing, and the value is whatever, sorry. Uh, and the revision is this rev. And what it does, it will only update the key if the last revision is this that we passed. So it allows you to handle the cases when other services might put the keys uh, in, the, in this key value store. And this allows you to have, to know you didn't overwrite some values, etc. So it's pretty useful. If I write it correctly, I did. Okay, uh, next thing, uh, what we can do is that we can delete the key. Oh, we can do history, but no, we will not do it. Uh, let's delete the key. And this, I think, will be interesting because what it does, it's not actually physically deleting the key. But as you see, we, we get a new event, delete. And if we look at the history, history, I set the history to 10, so that's why I can now watch the history. It's thing, uh, thing, really I called it things with thing inside, okay. Okay, so as you can see here, the history is there. And the last entry, it does not have any value and it says it's delete. So if now I have to delete the put here because it will, 
Okay? If now I will mm, get, try to get this value. Oh, no. I didn't think about this. Now fine. I don't need this. I don't need even this right now. Yeah. If I will do this, you see I get no value because the values are still in the stream, but it's fine. Uh, the last value is the it, so we will just not get this value. We can put more values than afterwards, or we can retrieve the old values via watching the history, but you're explicitly telling, I want to view the whole history, and I want to right, take the old value and get it back again, or do whatever you want to. So that's, that's really nice for those who need some audit log, for example, for, for key value, uh, especially for financial sector, that, you, uh, for many sectors, but especially for financial, that you can get back the values either for audit, either for actually application logic if you, if you like to. But what if you like to remove everything? Then there is purge, which does exactly that. So if you will run, I have obviously commented this because it will error. <laughs> Not error, it will be fine, but never mind. So if we purge this, and now see the history. All the values were deleted and the marker perch is put on. So if you do this, then it's, yeah, the, 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 the values are done. You, you cannot retrieve them. Uh, and that's basically the, uh, the basic functionality of key value. It's not something very uh, advanced in how key values are, but it's very nice for those who want some kind of uh, key value storage and don't want to spin up, I don't know, whatever key value at CD, Redis or whatever, and just want some basic functionality. And with this, you just, you just have this key value for free if you're using NAS with Jetstream. And actually, it's, I said it's pretty simple, but at the same time, there's, there's, there are guys, you, you can see it, that for example, K3S is now able to, by contribution, to use uh, key value from NAS as a state for, Kube, uh, for Kubernetes. So it's functional enough that you can do, uh, you can have Kubernetes with NAS as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a state. Okay, so this was for the key value. Now, now let's delete this before it hits me. Okay, so what about the object store? Let's call it store. Create object store. Nuts object uh, config. Oops. Okay, so the same story. Um, description, max age, just basically take TL, uh, file storage and replicas. Oops. So let's just call it. It has to be a string? Probably yes. No, if. Aaron, that's not new. Okay, so let's see if it works maybe. No, it will not work because I didn't do the Rust magic. And now Vim magic failed. Okay. Uh, okay, so now let's put. No, it will not work yet. Uh, let's run this. Okay. And now we can watch for the file store, watch storage. Okay, and now let's put in some values. Store, put, no, first we have to have something to put in there. So usually the question is, what if you want to use key value storage, but I want to have big files. Yeah, in Jetstream you can configure the storage size for a single message. But going above a few megabytes or a megabyte, it's getting not that performance and it's not a good idea. Uh, so we thought that, okay, so if you want to have bigger files, what's, that's still possible. We just have to chunk this, this bytes into smaller pieces. So that's exactly what Object Store actually does. It just chunks that those uh, messages in smaller, those uh, bytes into smaller pieces being single messages. Mm, so let's have a file here. Uh, CDFS file, yes, open, okay. Uh, I don't remember how the file was called. 
Examples test file. Again, very creative. Uh, okay. So, so this is, I'm not doing the file, I'm just creating a reader. The same can be done in, in, in Go. Mm, and right now I'm putting the file here. So we don't, you know, go through the IO to get the file and then uh, put it back. And now not object or met object meta. And I don't remember what has to be here, but that's fine. Uh, okay, let's, let's give a name. Okay, and we have to probably do this anyway. Pull, 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 okay. In Rust files, things are all variables are immutable by, by default, so we have to make them explicitly mutable. And this is just reference. I will not get into this because this is a long, long, will be a way too long stack. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's fine. Uh, so we just creating, we've put creating a new meta which describes how the file is named. We can have some link, some other stuff there. Uh, and we're putting just a reader there. So what this should put the file in. Compiling, compiling. Yeah. And you see, I g again ha have a watcher. So it's still, I'm able to watch uh, the, mm, the changes that are happening. And the file is now chunked into, uh, into smaller pieces, basically. And object store API is pretty simple. So what else we can do? We can delete it. We can maybe before deleting it, I will show you also object. Uh, so we can view the, all the object stores and we can view the files in this uh, object store. Mm, we can get them, of course, etc. All the operations typically that you do over some, some kind of storage. And we can delete the message, but maybe before deleting it, because it'll be too late. We can also seal it. Uh, and what it does, it's when I will seal it, because I can put the same different files, overwrite the files, for example, right? Create many files in object storage with different names or overwrite them. And what this allows us is that when you seal this given object storage, given bucket, no further changes are possible. So you're basically making an Im immutable object store. And yeah, that, that, that's basically how it works. So again, it's pretty, could be pretty useful for those who have to have control over how the files are handled. Uh, and of course, at this, we can uh, delete it or purge it from a file. Ha! And the last thing I wanted to show you did not work, probably because I sealed it and I cannot delete it like this. Uh, and yeah, I will not get into this now. I will just show you this is here. And now let's delete it. Storage. Deal. Probably. Yeah. And basically, the old data is now gone. So we created key values, uh, manipulated key values, and uh, showed you how to delete them, how to have non-destructive non operations on the key value. Uh, all of that is backed up by Jetstream and then do the same over object store. So that would be it. Uh, thank you very much for coming in so big audience. Uh, very happy to have you here. And if you want uh, to uh, talk about it, just reach me out. I'm available here and thank you very much.